Psalms of Fellowship, if you have the book, or the words from the author of service. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk company with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for today. 
Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Amos. If you have a Good News Bible, you'll find it on page 890 in the Old Testament part of the Bible, page 890. It's from Amos chapter 5, and I'm beginning to read at verse 18. How terrible it will be for you who long for the day of the Lord. What good will that day do you? For you it will be a day of darkness and not of light. It will be like someone who runs from a lion and meets a bear, or like someone who comes home and puts his hand on the wall only to be bitten by a snake. The day of the Lord will bring darkness and not light. It will be a day of gloom without any brightness. The Lord says, I hate your religious festivals. I cannot stand them. When you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. I will not accept the animals that you have fattened to bring me as offerings. Stop your noisy songs. I do not want to listen to your harps. Instead, let justice flow like a stream and righteousness like a river that never goes dry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's first letter to the people in Thessalonica. And again, if you have a Good News Bible, you'll find it on page 257 towards the back of the Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm beginning to read at verse 13. The Lord's coming. Our brothers and sisters, we want you to know the truth about those who have died, so that you will not be sad as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus those who have died, believing in him. What we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive on the day the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be a shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then we who are living at that time will be gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to sing a song together. And in fact, the words of part of this song are taken from that reading from Amos about the never failing stream and about the fact that. The river is going to flow from God for heaven. If you have Songs of Fellowship, it's number 429. If not, the words are on the order of service. O oh Lord, the clouds are gathered.
Now, if you've been standing to sing, would you please be seated for our Gospel reading? If you're following the Gospel reading, you'll find it on page 37 in the New Testament part of the Good News Bible, page 37. It's from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, and I'm beginning to read at verse 1, the parable of the ten young women. Jesus said, at that time the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there were ten young women who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the women began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten women woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the five foolish ones said to the wise ones, Let us have some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered, There is not enough for you and for us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish women went off to buy some oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later, the other women arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not. I don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, be on your guard then, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Be wise and be ready. That's the key thing about the readings today. Today, Remembrance Sunday, we remember conflicts and wars all over the world. We remember what happened in the past we remember what's happening now. And we pray for the future that we will not be full of wars and pain and death in years to come. We pray for peace. Today, we remember all those who gave their lives in the cause of freedom. They believed in a world free from tyranny and oppression, and they were prepared to die for. Although world wars have been terrible, unspeakable badness has happened. In each case, the world did have some warning. There was political wrangling going on in Europe, and many, many people before the First World War and before the Second World War were saying, this could erupt, this could turn into war. And of course it did. But fortunately, many people were able to brace themselves for what was to come. Not that they enjoyed it, not that they wanted it to happen, but at least they had some form of preparation. Now, when Jesus came into our world, the first time, the very first Christmas when he was born, he grew up to be an amazing person, someone who would share love with the world and peace with the world. And he came to confront all the wars, all the conflicts, all the sin, everything that drives the human race down. And Jesus gave his life. He sacrificed himself for everyone when he died on the cross to take away all the wrong of the world. And yet he was raised from the dead to give us all the hope of eternal life, that real, certain and Jesus promised to return one day and to gather us all to himself for eternity. And because Jesus wants no one to miss out on eternal life, he has given us lots of opportunity to be ready. He's given us lots of signs, 
Much of what was written in the New Testament of the Bible is pointing towards that day when Jesus will return. The signs of the times, what's going on in our world, are things that we should look at to help us to be ready for when Jesus returns. Now, five of the bridesmaids in our story from the Gospel today were ready. They brought extra oil for their lamps. I, I have to tell you, um, since we've been doing online services and we've been streaming services, um, somebody wrote in with a question. Are the candles on your holy table real or are they false? Are they electric? Well, I can assure you they're not electric candles, but they aren't wax candles. They're actually candles filled with oil. And Lydia is brilliant with me because if before the service, she makes sure that I've topped up the oil in the candles. Because otherwise, while you're watching this, the candles would be getting lower and lower and lower and they would go out. Well, we actually trimmed the wicks and filled up the candles with oil before this service. And that's what the five wise bridesmaids did. They had their lamps ready. So that when the great wedding procession arrived, when the bridegroom was in sight, and everyone started saying, Hooray! Let's go into the feast. They were ready. But the foolish ones had fallen asleep. And their lamps, their candles had burned down. They had no oil. And the wise ones didn't have enough to share. So the foolish ones had to go off at that late hour and try and find someone who was open and get some oil. Because they weren't prepared. You'd think they had thought about it. I have to say to you, at St Gabriel's Church here and at St Peter's in, in normal time when people book their weddings, some people book their weddings two years in advance and they spend two years getting it right, getting the bridesmaids organised, making sure the bride and groom know what they're doing, meeting with me to talk the whole service through, arranging the reception. So when it comes to the day, they are 100% ready. I don't think most of the couples I know would ask these five foolish girls to be their bridesmaids because they couldn't get it together. They were not interested in getting it together. They just bogged along and hoped for the best. Are you ready for when Jesus comes back? We are currently involved in several wars at the moment across our world. We're involved in a war against terrorism. Unspeakably evil things are happening right across the world. People are being killed. Just in the last couple of weeks, there have been terrorist atrocities where people have been killed brutally. We're also involved in a war against an evil pandemic, a virus that is taking away people's lives it's destroying society. It's making us hide from each other and hide from the world. The virus is producing unacceptable levels of casualties. Now I think we should be ready for Jesus to come back. It, it might be next week. It might not be for another thousand years. Nobody knows when it's going to be. But all of us, in every generation, in the generations to come, we should be ready. And we should be praying for that moment to happen. Jesus, Jesus, come back. We need you in our world. And we need to pray for help to get through the world at the moment. Because this is not something that we can do alone. Even if we had all the human help and resources that are available, we cannot make it alone. Today I think we should praise God for the emergency services, we should praise God for our armed forces, for all the things that have happened and will happen in our world. But we should pray that as a nation and as a world, that we would not rely on ourselves, but we would turn to God and say, Lord, we cannot do this. We need you to intervene. We need you to take this plague away from us. We need you to help us to win the final victory. Amen.
Now, I'm just going to spend a few moments praying together, and I don't know whether you want to close your eyes or put your hands together, or get yourself into a position where you can push away all the frustrations of the world and concentrate on the world. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, Remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatred of humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm as we honour the past. May we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. And it's been requested that we pray this military prayer today. Eternal Lord, besides whom there is no other God, keep, we pray thee, the British Armed Forces, second to none, in loyal duty to thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. With thee, O Father, and the Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end.
can come to an act of commitment. If you've been standing for the hymn, please remain standing. If not, perhaps you would stand at this point. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. And we say together, Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Now, as our Saviour taught us, so we humbly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now would you please be seated for a few moments. Just one or two notices to share with you before we conclude our service. Um, if you've been in the church building this morning and you've picked up a notice sheet, that's great. Um, if not, there was one attached to the uh, email that I sent round yesterday. First of all, thank you very much for being a part of today and for all today means. And if you haven't done so already, um, Basildon and Council have given us permission for people to go into Howard Park and to lay wreaths at the War Memorial all they've asked is that we didn't all do it at 11 o'clock and that people perhaps can space themselves out during the week or even during the rest of today to place those wreaths by the War Memorial. What I will do is in about a week or two weeks time I shall go to the park and collect up all the wreaths and all the crosses that are there and place them on the sheltered side of St Gabriel's Church where they will be for the whole year for anyone to come and sit maybe contemplate and view them all. This evening at half past six, our uh, evening service of spiritual communion will be live on Zoom. Um, it will be from the chapel here in church, but if you want to tune into it, I uh, will send a link round. If, you, if you're not sure about it, do get in touch with me. Obviously a recording of that service will be posted on YouTube afterwards for those of you who would pre prefer to watch it um, on catch up later. Tomorrow Monday our Bible study group resumes after half term at 12.30 and again that will be on Zoom. Don't forget that Wednesday this week is actual Armistice Day and the government has asked everyone to stop what they're doing just before 11 o'clock and spend two minutes in silence to remember all that has happened in the past. Our midweek reflection this week will be on Thursday be at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning and once again it'll be on Zoom but a recording will be posted on YouTube later. Um, our Youth Fellowship meets on Zoom on Friday evening. Friday is also Children in Need Day so those of you that are in the Youth Club, I know we haven't met for months and months and months but I'm going to send you a link and try and get you to join in with a virtual Youth Club on Friday night so that we can raise a little bit of money for Children in Need and then the Youth Fellowship will follow up afterwards. And then next Sunday, the second Sunday before Advent, once again, St Gabriel's will be opening for individual prayer at 9.30. This is assuming that the government has not changed its mind after the Bishop's appeal for us to be able to continue public worship, but will definitely be open if you want to come in and sit quietly and say your prayers and read your Bible next Sunday morning. Then our main service of Spiritual Communion at 11.15 will be pre-recorded and put out on YouTube and uh, our 
evening prayer service will be live on Zoom at half past six next week. Now, I'm going to ask you to stand and we're going to sing two verses of the National Anthem as we have the flags here on display in the church um, as part of our parade service. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always in your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. 